Hello, everybody. This is Rock My Bean. This is Mark. And I'm John. And, and this is Rock. Uh, uh, and uh, I'll repeat one more time. This is Rock My Bean. I hope you're uh, enjoying uh, our video because today we have a very, very typical drummer, and his name is Les Binks from Judas Priest. Yes. He's a very talented drummer from uh, mm -hmm. Judas Priest. He's playing the. Hard rock, a very special, um, a very special created band, Judas Priest, and one of those songs are like uh, one of uh, one of the songs for Judas. Priest. Well, he he did he did a number of songs. Judas Priest has a huge catalog of songs. Yeah, but Les Binks, he was originally um, with he played with a number of bands. He played with with uh, with uh, uh, Roger Glover, who had his own band after Deep Purple uh, broke up, or he was doing his own material. And and um, and then he in 1976, and then in 74, he actually before that in 74, uh -huh. he uh, he uh, played with Fancy, the band Fancy, who had two U.S. hits, and he did a cover of Wild Thing, which had been a hit from the 60s. Yeah. But uh, his connection to Roger Glover of Deep Purple led him to start to play with yeah. Judas Priest uh, between March 77 and July 79. So he was the drummer for Judas Priest in those years. And those were the years that Judas Priest was really starting to make a mark, starting to be recognized, starting to get on. Judas Priest was a early uh, British invasion heavy, a second British invasion, uh, heavy metal band. Uh, if you don't know who Judas Priest is, check out their catalog, great stuff. Yeah. Anyway, it was called heavy metal because that uh, that word was used in, in, in a song in the sixth, early 70s, and, they, and, and the music establishment just started terming really loud rock as heavy metal. Yes. They didn't call themselves that, but that's what they got called. So from now on, it was called heavy metal. So if you were a really hard rock band, you were heavy metal, okay? Do you like the band Metallica? Yes. And they've been called, they've been called heavy metal. So, you know, heavy metal is just another word for a really aggressive, loud rock band. Yeah. Uh, That's all like it really heavy is. Heavy metal is like... Yes. And then you got a lot of spinoffs. You got power, uh, speed metal and black metal and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, at this point in time, heavy metal, the actual heavy metal, was brand new. We had bands like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, for example, yeah. that came from England around the time of the late 70s. And made a real impact into the U.S. market, yeah. and by the '80s they were very popular. And so, uh, anyway, so they brought Les Binks on to do drumming. And what's interesting story, Mark? Yeah. Why we're doing Les Binks is a friend of mine who's been a drummer. He played b uh, drums back in the '80s, like I did, and he remembers playing the Les Binks mu uh, drum parts with uh, Judas Priest songs in the band he was yeah. in. Yeah. Well. I did the same thing, and so I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about Les Binks, and I, he sent me a video on, I think it was on Messenger or Instagram, of Les Binks doing a drum solo. Now, it's about 15 minutes long, so we're not going to do the whole 15 minutes, but this guy's a really good drummer, and he absolutely deserves to be recognized for being a great drummer, and I think the the drumming he did for Judas Priest in that period really, really helped Judas Priest's music become a well known, yeah, because his drumming was so musical. It wasn't just power drumming like later on in the '90s. They got speed metal and everything. It wasn't about being fast. It was about being musical. Yes, and Les Binks was a musical drummer. Still out there, still plays. So we're gonna do watch Les Binks uh, playing a, a part of a solo, and I think it was about ten years ago. Uh, not actually in his prime. That would have been you know forty years ago, forty-five years ago. So we're going to watch this, because it's a really good solo, and we're going to get, I think, some of the juiciest parts and watch yes. it, okay? So a little bit about Les Binks here. Beyond that, I think that I covered all the um, the salient points, but uh, he, uh, he left the band before the start of their North American uh, Killing Machine tour, and he said he left because he didn't feel he was really a part of the band. He felt that he was kind of a, a session musician they had hired to fill in, the, uh, uh, to be a drummer during their tour and recording their album. So that's why he left, and he just felt that he was not really wanted, and so he went and, and got involved with other bands. Well, let's watch Les Binks doing a solo here from 10 years ago, and I think you're all gonna like this one. Here we go. Oh, let's try it again. There we go. Uh, uh, the cowbell. Yes. 
Okay. It was the same old thing. Because he okay, was the same pa- as a cowbell. I'm gonna pause this. He's not playing cowbell. You know what he's playing? What? Octobons. See those big black, those long black drums? Octobons like... See those long black drums right there? Yeah. Those are called octobons. They're small drums, like this big around. Uh-huh. With long tubes, uh, long shells, see? Uh-huh. And, and I think Tama made those in the 80s. And uh, I know Neil Peer had side, I had a pair. Yeah. I know that, uh, um, um, that um, um, Alex Van Halen had them. Yeah. A lot of other drummers used it too. I never actually had a pair. But they were very musical drum. They almost sounded like cowbells sometimes. Yeah. And that's what he's playing here. Octopods. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> How can he do that? Good, isn't he? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. like single stroke roll. Yes. With the accent. We got a second snare over here. See that? Right yeah. Here. On double bass. You might have single bass. I can't tell. This could be the high end to uh, do the. Uh, Yep. A lot of good bass drum work here. I hope you're good to do like this. Well, you have to keep learning. Yeah? It's a long learning process these years. It's constant practice. Like, hey, you got double, double bass pedal. Uh-huh. There's this cowbell right there in front of me. Like, like yours. Yeah. <laughs> He's not whacking. He's not hitting hard. He's got finesse, not power. He can play loud and powerful. So. Swing jazz, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yep. No face. I I have to learn double play. Ha 
That's Binks. That's Binks. And uh, man, it's got some great speed, some great yes. finesse and detail work on the hi hat, the double bass, the ride cymbal. He's doing a lot of great tom work. Snipper got those octobons, which you don't see a lot of guys using anymore. Yeah. So that's really cool. I mean, it's, it, that that is a typical 1980s, 70s drum set right there. Yes. Rock heavy metal drum yes. set. Yes. He's got all the elements to it. And this guy had a real, he's able to work those sticks and those pedals really smooth. And you'll get there, Mark. Trust me. Yeah. Just keep working at it and practicing. Even if you can't do good at first, you just keep going and going and going and going until you get it. Yeah. You got to practice, though. I tell drummers all, my, teach my students, you got to practice. And sometimes they don't listen. So you learn who the good students are, who are going to be the good drummers when they practice. And the ones that don't, you know they're not really going. Yeah, there. and the uh, good thing is I can make a, like a shuffle beat in the bass drum. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And you've been Mark has been learning new bass drum patterns, which is really good because it's hard for a lot of students to really get into the bass drum. You know, sometimes when a drummer drummers learn drum set, they kind of leave the bass drum just kind of last. It's just whatever I do down there, I just you know whatever. It's the snare drum and the toms that matter. Yeah, but it's not. You can see from what he's doing here, the because, bass drum is a part of everything. Because the bass drum is the most important part in the uh, in the drum set. Because yes. the bass drum is keeping the time range. Exactly, it really is your time your timekeeper, and the hi hat can be too. But you're right, the bass drum has to lock in with the bass guitar or whatever the the main groove or beat is, and then you build on that. So yes, the bass drum is a yeah, foundation, he, uh, foundational drum. Yes, and it does. Uh, and it's uh, keeping you on time and beat, beat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'd love to hear a guy, somebody do a bass drum solo. I've never seen anybody do it yet, but it'd be really cool to see because yeah. if you can control your feet like that, uh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. cool. All right. Well, that's all we've got for today's show. Mark, what do you think of Les Binks? Oh, Les Binks was really good. Good, good. He was, uh, he was, uh, uh, he is a very good drummer. Uh, Judas Priest really uh, appreciate him. Yeah. And um, yeah, I th I was thinking about thinking uh, I was thinking about that he was uh, playing and the cowbell and those octagons and octobons 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 <laughs> and those uh, and those uh, things those are the kind of a like a bonus uh, Congo drums mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. They came from Africa, and they are really, really uh, cool beats uh, from some kind of like total song, like Africa, mm -hmm. like uh, yeah, those uh, kinds of songs, like uh, yeah, Copacabana from B Barry Merrill. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, those kind of so. Samba are you like the, the Latin 
African beat. Yeah. Yes. Latin African beat. And, and those like, octobons are meant... Yeah. Those octobons give you that higher range drum that's kind of yeah. like a, a Latin sounding drum. Yeah, they do do that for you. And I, Yeah. They might have come from Latin drumming and then they uh, Thomas said, we'll make them for regular drummers. Yeah. Which is what this is. And even to Safri Duo is uh, using this. Like, they do, yes. Those kinds of stuff. And you notice I have... We have Rototoms. Tom, or sorry. Uh, we have Rototoms on, on, on our kit. Now, Rototomas do sort of the same thing that Octobuns do. They give you that higher-end drum sound. Yeah. The difference is with the Rototom, you can turn the tom and adjust the pitch. Okay? Yeah. Whereas with Octobuns, that's what they are. That's all you have to have. See, the thing, octa means eight. There's only four drums, so I'm not quite sure what they mean by Octobun. It should be Quadbon. But anyway, I, I digress. So anyway, Mark, you like Les Binks? Yes. I like Les Binks. When I was a drummer in the 80s, I remember learning his drum parts, the Judas Priest songs that we yeah. do. So yeah, I had to like, I gotta do Les Binks. This guy is a really a good drummer, and he really helped Judas Priest go from a a, a, a band to a well known band in yeah. that period in the late seventies, early eighties. And it was because of his drumming, yeah, a lot of it. So all right, well, thank you for joining us for this Rock My Bean. Thanks from Mark and from me. We hope you'll join us again. And if you want to support the channel, please go to this address. Get some of our coffee. We're going to be getting a bundling on this website soon, so you can bundle your coffee. How uh, you can get bundles of it for a discount price, and all first orders are free shipping. And you can get some of the best coffee I swear you've ever had. It's the best coffee I've ever had. I know you're going to love it. It's uh, 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 every purchase. Some of it goes to the National Autistic Association, and it all and a lot more of it just helps this channel, so we can keep things going and maybe improve the the camera and do some things to make it a better show. Yes. So by all means, by all means, if you want to support this channel, that's a great way to do it. Well, thanks again. Uh, we'll see you again next time for Rock My Bean. Mark, say goodbye. And see you later. See you later. Keep rocking. Bye bye. Keep rocking.